okay so let's take a look at another circuit with two switches okay i have two switches here uh, s1 and s2 i have a battery as you can see on the diagram now because there are a couple of paths for current to flow this circuit is a parallel circuit right there are two paths right the switch one so when the switch one would be closed uh, the current would be flowing through this path when the switch two would be closed the current could flow through that path as well right there is my current this is my point this is another path right this is a parallel circuit right because there are more than one path for current to flow okay Okay, now let's take a look at the position of my switches. Okay, here is a quick exercise for you actually. So, when my switch S1 and S2 both are open, what would be the position of my LED? Now, if my switch 1 is open, 2 is closed, then what would happen? And uh, when 1 is closed, 2 is open, then what would happen? And you know, when both are closed, what would happen? So this is a quick exercise for you. So, okay. So let's see um, how to connect this circuit on breadboard. Okay, now the one thing which is um, important while making connection on breadboard that don't don't start connecting everything on one go. So there are a couple of paths for current to flow through this circuit as we discussed uh, just now. So um, start doing that. Start following that. So uh, make a circuit for the first path. Okay, for the first path. So start connecting component for path number one first, then path number two. Okay. So this is, this is my path number one. The current would flow through this circuit like this, right? From positive to negative through switch one, resistance and uh, LED one, right? So connect your this path one. Connect your switch, resistance, and LED first. That that way you'll be completing the path number one. Then connect the path number two. This is my path number two, right? The current is flowing through this to switch number two like this from positive to negative. Connect everything on the breadboard like this, okay. This is my path number two, switch, resistance, LED, okay. Now, after you are done connecting everything, then comes the turn for battery, okay. Like I like I told you before, so never connect the battery at the first, before when, when you are starting to assemble your circuit, never do that. So, okay, so connect your battery, okay. Now, just notice one thing that uh, the switch number S1, S2 and positive supply, these three points are short, right? Which means they are, they are common. So, um, let's just take a look at here, okay. Right, this, this is short. So, positive is going to be connected with S1, then S1 is going to be connected with S2, right? right. So, that's what we did here on our breadboard, right? This is, this is the tapping, so um, this is the positive tapping and this is also the positive tapping for switch number S2, right? And these two are connected, right? These two are connected, just like so. Now here is the solution to the exercise that I threw at you just, just a short while ago in this video, okay? Um, the first solution was uh, when my both my switches were open, S1 and S2 are open. Okay, what will happen in that case? Well, if both switches are open, the circuit is open and no current will flow through any LED, right? Either LED won't receive any current and hence both will be off, right? Both will be off, L1 and L2, right? Likewise, if my switch number 1 is open and switch number 2 is closed, what will happen then? The current will start flowing through the second path, right? Or through the LED number 2, right? From positive to negative, right? So, um, but uh, no current will flow through switch 1, so LED 2 would be on and 1 would be off, right? Now, if my switch 1 is closed, switch 1 is closed and switch 2 is open, current will flow only through path 1, through switch 1, right? And the LED 1 would glow and 2 would be off, right? 2 would be off, right? Likewise, if I close both the switches, S1 and S2, S1 and S2, the current will start flowing through both the circuits, right? 
as L1 and L2 through both the LEDs. I'm sorry, right? L1 and L2. So both my LEDs would be on, right? Now, important thing to notice here is that the brightness of LED is dependent on the value of resistance. What do I mean by that? So if your resistance R1 is higher and R2 is less, the L2 would brighten more and L1 less, right? And vice versa. So, and if if both the value of resistance are same, both would uh, both LED would glow the same. So that's that's important to understand. Okay. 